Welcome to the Cell Division series. This video focuses on DNA replication. At the end of this video, students should be able to describe the process of DNA replication, including the proteins involved in each step. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. One set of the pairs is from mom, and the second set is from dad. Each of the first 22 pairs are called autosomes. Each autosome is identical in structure and trait composition. For example, say chromosome number seven codes for whether or not an individual will have freckles. The actual trait options, such as freckles or no freckles, is only what varies on the chromosomes. The 23rd pair of chromosomes are the sex chromosomes. In humans, the female sex chromosomes are 1X from mom and 1X from dad. In males, the sex chromosomes are 1X from mom and 1Y from dad. These two sex chromosomes lead all the sexually dimorphic traits seen between men and women. Some examples of sexually dim dimorphic traits include height, weight, facial structure, facial hair, pelvic tilt, and sexual organs. Humans with their 23 pairs of chromosomes in their somatic or body cells are diploid organisms. The human gametes, or sperm and egg cells, each contain only 23 chromosomes, not 23 pairs. These are haploid cells. Diploid cells are 2N, or two copies of each chromosome, di, diploid. The haploid cells are 1N, or one copy of each chromosome, haploid, halfloid, half of what the diploid has. DNA is the genetic material that our chromosomes are made up of. Our DNA is compacted in the nucleus of each cell. In order for the cell to divide, it must replicate its DNA. DNA is a chain of nucleotide monomer subunits bonded together through phosphodiester bonds. Each chain of nucleotides is a strand, and two DNA strands are held together by hydrogen bonds. Remember these strands are anti-parallel and complementary. Our DNA double strands form a double helix or spiral staircase structure. The backbone of our DNA is made up of the deoxyribose sugar and the phosphates, while the rungs of the latter are the complementary nitrogenous bases, A with T and C with G. It is important to mention the structure of DNA is credited to Watson and Crick. They were working on how to identify the structure of DNA using Pauling's ball and stick protein models. Although they had used the data Im imaging from Rosalind Franklin's X-ray crystallography diffraction, this was provided unbeknownst to Franklin by Wilkins, who also worked in her lab. Her data showed the helical structure and consistent diameters found in DNA. Watson and Crick rushed to publish her discovery along with their modeling to unlock the secret of the DNA structure. Watson and Crick, along with Wilkins, were honored with a Nobel Prize in 1962. Rosalind Franklin had died before the award was given, and since the prize is not bestowed upon individuals posthumously or after death, her contribution is not honored with the prestigious award. For a long time, Textbooks did not recognize the discovery or the impact that Franklin's work had on the discovery of DNA structure. But today, we are very lucky to have lots of information on what really happened to unlock the mystery of the structure of the double helix. Three mechanisms of DNA replication were proposed. The first, a semi-conservative model, showed that each of the two parent strands made a complementary copy of itself, creating a daughter strand. The second, the conservative model, demonstrated that both copies, as a double helix, made a copy of themselves, creating the daughter strands. The third mechanism was dispersive, in which the parent strands made segmented copies of their DNA and integrated it into their existing DNA, creating new daughter strands with mixed old and new pieces of DNA. Meslison and Stahl showed that by growing E. coli in heavy nitrogen, or N15, media, then allowing them to replicate on light nitrogen, or N14, media, the replications changed over 14 generations from heavy to lighter 
and later and later until they were showing all daughter strands using only N14 and the original parent strand still with the N15. This provided the evidence needed to confirm the semi-conservative model of DNA replication. In order for DNA to replicate, each of the parent strands must be separated, then copied with complementary base pairing, creating their new accompanying daughter strand. Then each of those two strands, one original parent strand and one original daughter strand, separate and create a new complementary accompanying daughter strand. In order for replication to begin, the double helical strands must be separated. To begin, they first unwind. The point where replication will begin is called the origin. From the origin, replication takes place using both parental strands as templates, synthesizing the new daughter strands. The separation point is called a replication fork. The protein helicase acts as the scissors and cuts open or unzips the hydrogen bonds between the parent strands. Helicase attaches to only one strand and moves toward the replication fork. Another protein, topoisomerase, attaches ahead of the replication fork to unwind the coiled strands and prevent supercoiling. Single-stranded binding proteins, or SSBPs, attach to prevent the strands that are separated from reannealing or joining back together. In order for new DNA strand to be synthesized, we first need to have a 10 to 12 RNA primer added to the enzyme by DNA primase. This 10 to 12 base primer is where the synthesizing protein DNA polymerase 3 will bind to begin creating the complementary strand of DNA. During DNA replication, the DNA polymerase 3 enzyme can only add nucleotides in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Polymerase attaches to the 3' prime end of the primer to start synthesis. This two enzyme process to begin DNA replication is referred to as initiation. The free floating nucleotides are transported in the cell as deoxynucleoside triphosphates. In order for the DNA polymerase to add nucleotides to the newly forming strand, they must first be broken off from the additional diphosphates called pyrophosphate. Then polymerase 3 will attach the nucleotides, phosphate, to the sugar in the growing strand backbone. Finally, the complementary bases are hydrogen bonded together. All of these steps occur at a rate of 50 nucleotides per second. Because the DNA has only one replication fork, the bases can only be attached in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The two polymerase 3 molecules attached on opposite strands are creating new strands in a different manner. The leading strand can be synthesized in a continuous fashion. The lagging strand, however, is assembled in segments or in a discontinuous fashion. Each section created by the lagging strand, polymerase, is referred to as an Okazaki fragment. Each set on the lagging strand must be begin with a primer. So DNA primase attaches a few nucleotides for the polymerase 3 to bind. Then the polymerase synthesizes the short strand, waiting for more of the original parent strand to be unzipped by the helicase. Now the lagging strand being synthesized in segments has small holes between the sections of one Okazaki fragment ending and the new primer beginning. The enzyme DNA ligase comes in to fill all the gaps or the nicks between the segments, connecting the fragments together. The enzyme DNA polymerase 1 digests the RNA primers with endonucleases and replaces them with DNA. This portion of the replication synthesizing process creates the two new daughter strands and it's referred to as elongation. Finally, we reach the termination part of replication in which the newly synthesized DNA strands must be proofread for errors. The polymerases all check their work as they go for any errors in the strands. In the rare event a mismatch occurs, the polymerase will move backward, digest the incorrect linkage, and continue forward synthesizing the new strand again. In the end of DNA replication, 
the very end points of the chromosomes cannot be created with polymerase 3 or polymerase 1. An enzyme, an enzyme called telomerase adds the final caps on the ends. These caps are junk DNA in a repeating sequence called telomeres. These protect the DNA strands from degradation during cell division. Students should be able to differentiate between the steps of DNA replication during initiation, elongation, and termination. Students should be able to describe the proteins associated with DNA replication. Students should be able to contrast the leading and lagging strand formation in DNA replication.